Let's look at the, the two programs side by side. On the left is a profile generated with, uh, with CRISP, and on the right is just pretty much the same profile generated with um, Rockfall. Couple things to, to note on these. These are after the rocks have been rolled. These are the Rockfall trajectories in CRISP, and these are the trajectories in Rockfall. So very similar. Um, one thing in CRISP, the rocks are, are just rolled. You can see them as lines. But with Rockfall, you can actually isolate a particular rock and watch it roll in slow motion to get an idea of how it will behave on the slope. The next thing that we want to look at are energy losses. When, when the rocks bounce through the air, they're not losing energy. But when they, they hit the surface, of course, they're losing energy. And that energy is lost in, in various modes, in, in bouncing and, and frictional losses and surface roughness. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, a couple other things I want to note here um, are the bounce heights and energies at critical points. Chris uses a thing called an analysis point. It allows you up to three analysis points, or APs, and these are shown on the, the profile after we, the program's been run. Rockfall calls the analysis points collectors, and those are called collectors, and they're right, this is the same collector for this particular run. So what we get at the collectors or the analysis points are the energies and bounce heights of the rock at that point. So we want to determine where we want to select those, those collectors or analysis points. In other words, maybe by the side of the road would be one place or on the top of a, a lip might be another place to, in order to determine where we're going to put our barrier and how much energy it will have at that point. Um, I might add a couple other things. These are the elevations on the left. Both programs are similar elevations on the left. In CRISP, you can only go from left to right. Uh, with Rockfall, I believe now you can go from right to left, but generally just set it up like CRISP. So these are going to be our elevations over here on the left. And then on the bottom scale, we have distances. In CRISP, we must start at zero. So our highest point or the end of our slope will be at zero on the left. And then with Rockfall, we can we can model zero to be anywhere we want it to be. You can see a minus 2.5, zero, et cetera. And so these are distances along the slope. Uh, another thing I want to point out are these various in, in CRISP, there's are numbers, one, three, five, seven. And over here in Rockfall, we have different colors. Those correspond to different parts of the slope with different properties. These properties could be different Material properties, for instance, this brown might represent a boulder field, the green might represent grass, or they could be different slopes. We have a straight slope here in this brown area, and then it gets steeper here, and then it picks up again, and there's a grade change here, and there's gray. So those are different properties that we want to look at and we want to input. 